There's a lot of nostalgia for the 80s these days. The presidency of Ronald Reagan brought on a renewed sense of patriotism. Tear down this wall. Which led to John Rambo oiling up his abs and wearing a bullet belt. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. Malls were popping up in every town and being hyped as the new hot hangout. High school comedies were also popular. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Thanks to the work of John Hughes and the Brat Pack. The 80s offered a lot of great movies. Here are 10 that defined 80s cinema. I feel the need, the need for speed. The pinnacle of pro-military Reagan-era nationalism, Top Gun. It stars Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer as fighter pilots at the most prestigious training program in the world. This movie has all the staples of 80s action. Motorcycles, sunglasses, oiled up muscles, and a boss who disagrees with the hero's roguish ways. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Top Gun's depiction of aerial warfare was so effective that the U.S. Navy used the film as a recruitment video. They even sent recruiters to theaters to catch moviegoers coming out and wanted to be just like Maverick. By sticking closely to their premise and deviating wildly from the actual script. All right, that's bad. Okay, all right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. The team behind 1984's Ghostbusters managed to create a comedy masterpiece. Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Dan Aykroyd, and Ernie Hudson all have spectacular chemistry. Their on set improvs particularly by Murray Do you want this body? Is this a trick question? gave the movie a spontaneous comic energy that most of today's comedians try and fail to recapture. Any questions? Yeah. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? John Hughes made a bunch of high school movies in the 80s, two of which are on this list alone. But The Breakfast Club stands out as the epitome of all of them. The writer-director took five stock characters from his chosen genre. A jock. Two hits. Me hitting you, you hitting the floor. A popular girl. Why don't you just shut up? An outcast. Forgot my pencil. A nerd. <laughs> and a goth. He humanized them by sticking them in Saturday detention together and forcing them to interact. After a day of getting to know each other, they realize they're not so different after all. Train! Rob Reiner's Stand By Me is the definitive coming-of-age movie. In many ways, it's also a road movie. It's about a group of characters who go on a journey to reach a destination. In this case, the characters are a group of boys in the 50s, each with their own unresolved personal issues. The destination is the location of a dead body, but by the end of the movie, the body is the last thing on anyone's mind. Don't face. I'll kill you, I swear to God. The characters hijack the story and make it about their internal, emotional journeys. The framing and narrative is a little corny, but other than that, Stand By Me is a masterpiece. Hey, at least now we know when the next train was due. Goonies never say die! Perhaps the height of an era, The Goonies brings the pure escapism and lively sense of adventure of Raiders of the Lost Ark to the familiar suburban environments of E.T. Do the truffle shuffle. Come on! Do it! <laughs> the movie's greatest quality is its timeless story. Conceived by Steven Spielberg, 
a group of kids enjoy a final weekend together before their homes are repossessed to make way for an expanding country club. They find a map that sends them on a treacherous treasure hunt. The characters are all memorable and wonderfully acted, and there are plenty of moments that have become iconic. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. After John Carpenter's success with Halloween in 1978, slashers reign supreme in 80s horror. Friday the 13th, My Bloody Valentine, Sleepaway Camp, and more. But the epitome of this era of horror is Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, in which the killer Freddy Krueger targets high schoolers in their dreams. I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. From the twist that places the blame on the kids' parents to Craven's deft blending of the real world and the dream world. A Nightmare on Elm Street is visionary horror at its best. It has that rare blend of commercial appeal and impeccable craft. Nightmare on Elm Street. I can't wait to see the look on the bastard's face. <laughs> John Hughes had a knack for finding deeper meaning in simplistic premises. The previously mentioned movie, The Breakfast Club, uses a Saturday detention for an hour and a half of soul searching. Ferris Bueller's Day Off uses a high schooler skipping school for a day to meditate on human existence. It's a truly timeless movie that teaches viewers a very important lesson. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. I think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy. Yippee possibly the greatest action movie ever made, and possibly even the greatest Christmas movie on top of that. Die Hard is a universally adored masterpiece that set the bar high at the beginning of Bruce Willis's career as an actor. They have already killed one hostage. This channel is reserved for emergency calls only. His everyman performance as John McClane is what really made this movie connect with 80s moviegoers. Let's come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. How could that man just get up after you did He's not a man. Machine. Terminator. Cyber 9 Systems Model 101. The nightclub featured in The Terminator, where Sarah Connor first encounters the T-800, is called Tech Noir. This was writer-director James Cameron's way of naming the genre he was pretty much creating with the movie. As technological advancements were on the rise, fear of technology was prominent in the 80s. It's no surprise that this movie grew out of a nightmare Cameron had. The plotting is masterfully simplistic, the world-building and backstory are expertly woven into the story without ever distracting from the action. I'll be back. You built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Robert Zemeckis' time travel comedy, Back to the Future, is basically a perfect movie. Not a single line of dialogue is wasted. They all either develop the characters or advance the plot. Or, in the most impressive cases, foreshadow later events in the movie. Every actor is ideal for their role, Hello? Hello? particularly Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, whose palpable chemistry made Doc and Marty one of the greatest on-screen pairings of all time. Back to the future! So there you have it, 10 movies that defined 80s cinema. What do you think? Is there a movie you'd like to add to the list? Leave a comment below and check out some of these other videos from the review.